Hello guys and welcome back to another video on my channel, I'm Octopus and today a very special video in the sense that I, it is not a video a match played by me but as you can see it's a match played by Ghostbuster, another Creed guy which is divisioning with Bentos which is another member of the Creed clan and as you can see Ghostbuster is running the Lenin, the tier 8 premium Russian battleship. As you can see, Lenin has the shape of a Nelson, basically. She has three triple 406mm turrets, all placed in the front, but unlike Nelson that has 25mm of power, Lenin has 32, and of course Lenin is a tier 8, while Nelson is a tier 7. Can, this is the first time I'm looking at this replay at all and I just look at the final results the final scoreboards and screens of this uh, match and I'm pretty amazed uh, to see how Ghostbusters, um, how Ghostbusters achieved those results and I will be watching this match for the first time with you guys so we will see as you can see uh, Ghostbusters and Bentos are German, as you can see from the uh, in-game chat. Of course, this is kind of the uh, perfect matchmaking for Lenny because you, uh, you, you are top tier. You are facing a lot of uh, tier 6s and tier 7s, so this is very very good. Only one overburn on the Budioni. Of course, Lenin Dispersion is not the best at, at range, but it is, it is not that dreadful either. But of course, as all the Russian battleships, he shines at medium range, usually. Even if from time to time you, you can have some very, very lucky shots, very lucky volleys, even at medium to, to, to long range. Let's see, this time all three turrets are singing. Let's see what is this Ujoni gonna do. He's turning out. Here, I'm sorry, the uh, the camera on the shells is bugged, but this is a replay, any, a replay issue. As you can see, this mission not the best at long range, so... Um, and he's also kind of alone on this flank. There's only this Oland and the Devonshire. So he's already taking kiting positions, but he's not abandoning this flank, of course because this is not what you want to do. You want to just kite and farm the enemies while they are pushing your um, your flank. As I always say, you don't abandon completely flanks. But again, overpens these cruisers. As you can see, his division mate, Bentos, with, with the Cossack, is not on his own flank. He went to A, he kept A, he's now moving towards B, and once he kept B, I assume he will try to come on this flank and for providing some spotting and some support to Ghostbusters, but we will see about that. As I said, this is the very first time I take a look at this replay uh, with you guys, so I, I don't really know what to expect. I mean, I kind of know because I, I, I've seen the final results, but I'm curious to see how those results just came out of, out of this match. Normandy pushing in. Uh, Normandy has not a very good armor, but and this is 8k already, which is a very good uh, very good hit from Ghostbuster. And well Lenin, speaking about the, the ship, has a very very strong armor. She is a very good tank in, uh, for a tier 8. Of course, you have to position yourself accordingly because if you get flanked, it is not that easy to maneuver and to um, yeah to reposition because because of your tur turret setup basically. Which, uh, as you can see, there are only these three turrets in the front. So if you get flanked or surrounded, yeah, well, uh, your broadside is very weak. You can be easily devastated even in, even by tier 6 battleships, so you have to keep in mind that your broadside is very, very squishy. At like 6, 
five kilometers, if you are facing a Des Moines, a tier 10 cruiser with AP on your broadside, the one can easily signal you from even um, four or five kilometers. So keep in mind that your broadside is very squishy and it is not well armored at all. This New Orleans is heavily misplaying at less than 12 kilometers, giving full broadside to a Lenin. This, is, this can be painful. Yeah, devastating strike, very good aim from Ghostbuster, but definitely this New Orleans didn't didn't respect at all the Lenin because at those ranges Lenin dispersion usually is not any will not forgive any kind of mistake from a cruiser especially even battleships can be hardly punished by Lenins but cruisers uh, a Lenin can eat uh, these cruisers for for breakfast basically because they are lower tier cruisers as you can see another devastating strike from the front this is the power of overmatching 406 millimeters on cruisers like Budioni that I think they have I don't know 25 millimeters bow something like this even less I, I'm not sure about this uh, low tier cruisers armor but I'm pretty sure yeah that as you, as you saw that was the overmatch so I assume they were um, he, he, he t has like 25 millimeters bow or even less so you have to keep your distance in a cruiser uh, from the landing even high, even high tier cruisers have to keep their distance from, from the landing, but if you're a, a bottom tier cruiser, well, uh, then you have to be extra uh, extra careful. As you saw, this Normandy it took like 18k from the front, because her nose is, is, is not armored enough to bounce the or shatter the, um, the Lenin shells. The downside of the Lenny is the very very long uh, reload time. By default it is 32 seconds if I'm not mistaken or 33 uh, even. I'm not entirely sure. But if you if you manage your shots and if you hold your fire and fire on perfect targets, perfect uh, in the perfect situation, you will be rewarded most likely. So, as you can see, Ghostbuster team is heavily down on points. Because they have what almost 300 points to go, to claw back. Ghostbuster team has three kills, and they are all Ghostbuster kills for now. So he's doing a very good job keeping his team alive somehow. As I was saying, the Cossack moved toward from A to B and then to C, and he finally kept C. So. He should be fine going back to B and fighting the Kagero because Cossack has a very uh, good concealment. It's not as good as Kagero, but it is quite quite, quite similar. I think it's like 5.5, 5.6, something like this. Kagero has 5.4. So if you can catch the Kagero, he also has Hydro, if I'm not mistaken. So um, he's a very good cap contester at tier 8. So right now Ghostbuster has cleared this entire flank and there is the lightning spotted. So um, as you can see 31 seconds uh, with I assume he's running also AR. So yeah, by default it's 30 32 seconds, I, I, I think. Very good hit on the lightning three overruns. Uh, could have been much more, but still very good volley on, on a small and agile DD as, as lightning. As I was saying, Ghostbusters cleared almost the, the C flank besides this lightning and he's now moving towards B because he wants to reinforce the, um, the A flank that is kind of collapsing because the enemy team has more than half of, of the ships on A. So he, you see, he's gonna provide the best support for his teammates at A. The AA on the Lenin is not too bad considering that it is a tier 8 battleship. So if you're facing tier 8 carriers, let's see what this Kagero. Oh, he went undetected. There he is again. I don't think he can love this island. Mm, oh, he could. 6 hits, 8k. So now his Cossack might have the, 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 yeah, the ability to just to go in and gun down the Kagero. Then the Cossack is spotting Kagero with the Hydro. 
So very good uh, synergize with it in Cossack and the, in the lane. Cossack finishes the kill on the Kagero. Very good job for him, very good support. They are not chasing the lightning on C, that was a low HP. Instead they are focusing on the enemy ships that are trying to go for B. Is good of course. I'm sorry for this bug, but the tracking of the shells is not working on this replay. I'm not sure why, but this is it. So let's see. Oh, okay, we have a Sinop charging in. We have two Sinops, to be honest. And the first one is shooting Ghost Buster from the front, but this is unlikely to achieve anything valuable because, as I said, Lenin is well armored, especially on the front. So this Sinop would you have a, a, a hard time dealing massive damage to Ghostbusters from the front. But if they can get uh, around him, then things can change. This is another kill, no citizens, but still penetration as mo are more than enough to seal the deal on this New Orleans. The, this is the fourth kill for Ghostbusters and the Confederate achievement already, after only 11 minutes in the game. But as you can see, um, we have 600 points to claw back and Ghostbuster team is left with 4 ships against uh, how many? 8? 7? Seven? 7 ships. So, and Ghostbuster is pretty much the only uh, ship with some HP because the other two ships are DDs and the carrier which is a tier 6 carrier in a tier 8 matchmaking. So good luck with that. And now he's facing multiple targets from different directions. So one Dallas that is spamming him with HE and two Synops that are facing from the front but from two different angles plus some carrier planes coming in so this is uh, looking into uh, kind of a rough situation luckily the Cossack I think scores a very good torpedo hit on one Synop which is left with only 6k HP She's, she's on, she is even showing some kind of broadside but Synop is a very tanky ship as well so Ghostbuster tried to Citadel the Sinop, but instead he shoot she shot the belt and that resulted a in a ricochet. Problem solved, sir. I think the next time he will be going for the uh, superstructures if the Sinop will not show him full broadside. Because this is kind of guaranteed uh, guaranteed damage. Let's see what, what he what he does. He went for the upper, upper part of the nose of the Sino, which is 25mm if I'm not mistaken, so very good aim for him. And this is the Kraken Unleashed for Ghostbuster, but as you can see, the match is far far from being from being won, so we will see. Now we have this Sino, which is kind of camping here, because she's afraid of this of, of the Lenin, I guess. She has no HP, I mean no HP, 15k, but not enough to stop, to stop a landing charging at you if the landing knows what, what she's doing and of course Ghostbusters is a very very skilled and experienced player so you yeah, have to respect Ooh. massive hit from the Sinop as you can see Ghostbusters knows where to aim what are the weak spots of this of the Sinop the upper part of the nose for example so, yeah, and the Cossack is spamming the Sinop, and this is the second kill, no, sorry, third kill for Bentos and fifth kill for, um, for Ghostbusters. So as you can see, the enemy team lost eight ships, and the eight kills are, for, so far, all between Ghostbusters and Bentos. So this division is just murdering everything in the enemy team, and they are, they are putting a super effort and a gigantic effort to just keep their team into this uh, into this this battle. Ranger gets spotted on those ranges on, on against the Lenin. She was even kind of lucky to get Citadel only once, in my opinion, because this could have been a much more painful volley for this for this Ranger. She's trying to strike Ghostbuster with everything she has, but a tier six um, CV against the Lenin. Uh, doesn't stand too many chances. If she, if it's not a Ryuzo that can sit the Lenny with AP bombers, uh, questionable if she will be uh, able to to sink a full HP Lenin. 
Good hit on the Dallas, but Dallas is so thinly armored that most of the hits are overpens. Here are some more planes from the Ranger. Cossack is also coming in to provide some kind of AA support, as much as he can, of course. Cossack AA is not great at, uh, at all. Let's see if this Dallas that is turning and listing will be, yeah, he will be Citadel. And this is the third devastating strike for Ghostbuster this game, and the sixth kill as well. But his Ranger manages to get killed. Problem solved, sir. And so they are left in 3v3 with 400 points remaining. And I mean, to claw back. And as you can see, uh, the enemy has 920 points by now. But luckily, luckily, Bentos is about to. Um, He's about to enter A, so he might have the chance to stop the enemy point income, and this will provide Ghostbusters some more time to maybe pull off a, a miracle and try to um, to do something to kind to try at least to win this match. As you can see, um, Ghostbuster turrets were knocked out several times, and this is one weakness of the enemy. The turrets are not so so much armored, and they can get no knocked out. Uh, pretty easily from other BB's uh, AP salvos. Considering that you are always kind of always nose in, and you will um, you you will give your nose to, to the enemy ships, it is not uh, it's not unlikely that your turrets might be even uh, perma disabled permanently during a battle. At least one turret, especially the second one, as you can see here, which is the most exposed one. This 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 one, the higher one. Uh, can be knocked out pretty easily, so you have to pay attention on this as much as you can. The Maggie is giving kind of broadside. She is lucky with the, with the dispersion, and doesn't take too much damage. So the Maggie here is the major threat for Ghostbuster because he has the turtle back that at close ranges prevents her from being citadel, usually at least. While the Colorado uh, doesn't have this kind of feature, so he's focusing on the Amagi, that is also the lower the lower HP target. So right now, as you can see, Bentos managed to um, stop the enemy point income by capping A, and he's dealing with the with the rocket planes, which can harm him uh, pretty much because even if the carrier is a tier six carrier. The rocket planes are pretty much overpowered against EDs at any at any tier. Now Ghostbuster is a, in a bad situation because he's kind of crossfired by these two battleships. But the Colorado focused on uh, focused the Olan, and she managed she managed to even kill the Olan. So luckily for him, she was she has she hasn't uh, she didn't have the um, the guns pointed towards him. He managed to finish the Amagi seventh kill. And high caliber as well. And now we are left the Colorado. Uh, we don't know, really know about the Cossack and the Ranger, but I assume the Cossack is spamming the Ranger with with HE. So we will see here. Colorado, oof, devastating strike on the Colorado as as soon as she gave him broadside. As I said, Colorado doesn't have the turtleback, and apparently, yeah, GG. So absolutely gorgeous result for Ghostbuster and Bentos because as you can see Ghostbuster achieved 234k damage, 29, no sorry, 30 planes uh, shot down, 8 kills, 7 citadels, even in a, a capture assist, 4 devastating strikes, confederate, dreadnought, kraken unleashed and high caliber and as you can see a pretty damn good 1.2 million credit of income so very very much gg to him and to his division mate because well their result is astonishing as you can see here 3.6k basic speed yes they were top tier but i i challenge you to just uh, do the, the same thing very much gg to bentos as well four kills for him 2.8k basic speed in a Cossack, which is a remarkable result as well. As, as you can see, they killed all the enemy ships. 
eight kills for Ghostbuster and four for Bentos. So all 12 opponents were killed by these two guys that but basically won their, the match on their own. You, you, you can pretty much say that. Yes, they, have, they were top tier once again, perfect matchmaking, but I mean, this is a super result indeed. As you can see, this is the detailed report. 2.8 million potential damage in a tier 8 battleship. This is a remarkable result as well. Uh, pretty much everything came from his AP, of course, because Lenin, unlike Nelson, you don't want to shoot HE with, uh, with Lenin. Uh, you, you want to stick with your AP. He damaged all 12 ships in the game, as you can see. Warship destroyed 8, warships damaged 4. So he he damaged all the ships in, in the enemy team and he managed to kill two thirds of, of, of them. So astonishing result. Plus he tanked 84.4k damage for a tier uh, 8 BB is pretty much, it is a lot. And as I said, he's not running premium account apparently. So still, but still 1.1 million credit income. If he had premium account, as you can see, 1.7 million income which is i mean this is kind of missouri results almost i mean, I mean even better than average missouri results so and yeah he had some modifiers on but still astonishing results and thank you very much ghostbuster for providing me this replay astonishing match very good very well managed in all in all i can't i can't say anything more because uh he didn't seem in a struggle uh, I, in a, any time, I mean, ev in every situation, he perfectly knew what he was doing and what he had to do, and perfect mm, management of positioning, consumables, everything, perfect aim. So, of course, Ghostbuster is a very experienced and um, yeah, very very good player, as you of course have noticed by, <laughs> by now. So, thank you again for providing me this this astonishing replay. Very well done to you and to Bantos, of course. You don't have to forget his his uh, his support because he was he was pretty very very good in this match as well. So once again, thank you guys for providing the for providing me this replay. And yeah, so that was the Lenin replay from Ghostbuster guys. If you meet him in the enemy team, uh, leave him a compliment and try to stay away from him because as you can see, he can be very dangerous. And well, uh, I will catch you next time, I guess.